Moving towards the southern end of the Lesser Antilles now and we have the Windward Islands with Barbados included in this section. This area is often struck by developing storms, especially further north, whilst Barbados is usually spared intense hurricane landfalls, though that's not to say it hasn't happened before. Since 1950 there have been a total of 39 landfalls, 29 of these as tropical storms, 3 category 1 hurricanes, 2 category 2 storms, 4 category 3 major hurricanes and a single storm which struck at category 4 intensity. The costliest storm here was Ivan in 2004 causing damages of 1.2 billion dollars. The deadliest cyclone is believed to be Hurricane Thomas in 2010 causing 50 fatalities. The last storm to make landfall here was tropical storm Chantal earlier this year. In September 1963, a tropical depression formed in the Atlantic Ocean and began to approach the Lesser Antilles. The next day, this system became Tropical Storm Edith and continued to become a hurricane just hours later. Edith passed just north of Barbados as a Category 2 hurricane and made landfall in St Lucia before continuing towards the northwest, eventually making landfalls in the Dominican Republic and on the Turks and Caicos Islands. Edith caused heavy rain and strong tropical storm force winds over Barbados, the first island to experience inclement conditions from the storm. However, it was Martinique that fared worst, with 10 fatalities reported amidst winds gusting to Category 3 intensity. St Lucia faced similar conditions, though no fatalities were reported here. Total damages amounted to $43 million. In August 1970, a tropical storm formed in the Central Atlantic and 36 hours later was named as Tropical Storm Dorothy. Dorothy continued towards the west-northwest, moving in a near straight line, apart from a jog towards the south as it passed close to Barbados. The storm then passed through the southern half of Martinique and dissipated south of Haiti. Dorothy caused its worst effects on the island of Martinique with total damages on the Lesser Antilles amounting to $34 million and a death toll possibly higher than 50. In September 1994, a short-lived storm formed near the Wibbard Islands and became Tropical Storm Debbie just before making landfall on St Lucia. The storm soon dissipated as it entered the Eastern Caribbean, however Debbie still caused significant flooding on St Lucia, with 9 fatalities across the Lesser Antilles and damages of $115 million. In September 2004, Hurricane Ivan passed over Grenada in the southern Windward Islands as a powerful Category 3 hurricane, causing severe and widespread damage throughout the island nation. 39 fatalities occurred here with damages of $1.1 billion and a further $47 million reported elsewhere in the Windward Islands. The next year, in July 2005, Hurricane Emily passed through in a very similar fashion, though weaker as a Category 1 hurricane. Damages in Grenada were less significant this time around, though Emily still wrought $110 million worth of damage on the island with one fatality. And now we move on to other areas not yet covered but still notable in the Atlantic, those being the South American continent, the ABC Islands, the Cape Verde Islands and the Canary Islands. All of these areas have at least one story to tell as we're about to find out. These areas are believed to have received five cyclones since 1950, all at tropical storm intensity without any striking as hurricanes. The costliest cyclone was Hurricane Joan in 1988, causing $1 billion in damages. Tropical storm Brett, five years later, became the deadliest, with 173 fatalities. The last storm to impact any of these areas was Tropical Depression Isidore in 2002. In August 1974, a tropical depression formed in the Central Atlantic and became Tropical Storm Alma whilst remaining at low latitude. The storm continued towards the west, making landfalls in Trinidad and in Venezuela, continuing for another day before dissipating. The storm caused over 50 fatalities, most of them coming from a plane crash in Venezuela. In late August 1982, a tropical storm formed with haste near the Cape Verde Islands and passed just to the south on its way out into the open Atlantic. Beryl continued in a general west-northwest direction of the Central Atlantic, weakening into a tropical depression eventually, with a storm turned towards the west, finally dissipating a few days later to the north of the Virgin Islands.
Beryl caused inclement weather on the Cape Verde Islands, causing three fatalities and damages of at least $3 million. In mid-September 1984, a tropical depression formed between the coast of Africa and the southern Cape Verde Islands, moving slowly towards the latter. The storm was named Fran as it passed almost directly over the island of Brava. Fran continued towards the northwest, passing the other islands, and then curved towards the west, maintaining tropical storm intensity for two more days before weakening and eventually dissipating in the central Atlantic. With peak sustained winds of 65 miles per hour, the storm caused heavy rain and gusty winds, resulting in the destruction of at least a thousand homes, as well as up to 32 fatalities and damages of near $3 million. In October 1988, a tropical depression formed in the central Atlantic at a fairly low latitude and developed into Tropical Storm Joan half a day later. Joan continued towards the west-northwest, gradually curving more westward over the next few days, dipping southwards on approach to the Windward Islands where it passed close to Grenada. Joan continued on a heading just south of west, flipping the northern extremities of Venezuela and Colombia. Despite this, Joan managed to reach hurricane intensity not far from the coast of Colombia and continued into the far southern Caribbean Sea, where it intensified further into a Category 3 hurricane before losing intensity while stalling. Joan then began to move again a day later and reached its true peak as a powerful Category 4 storm with sustained winds of 145 miles per hour, an intensity it held until landfall in Nicaragua. Joan weakened over land, emerging near the Pacific coast of Central America, where it was named Miriam. Most of Joan's 334 fatalities occurred in Nicaragua where it made its strongest landfall. Here, up to 248 people died amongst the decimation of upwards of 20,000 homes. Costa Rica also suffered dozens of fatalities, with up to 46 reported. The storm also cost three quarters of a billion dollars in damages in Nicaragua, however damages in Colombia were higher at one billion dollars. Most of this occurred due to flooding and landslides that also killed 36 people in South America. Towards the latter part of November 2005, an extratropical storm began to gain subtropical characteristics and became subtropical storm Delta to the southwest of the Azores. Delta continued towards the south, including a jog to the east, turning east in true fashion two days later, still over the open ocean. Delta then accelerated and tracked towards the northeast, remaining a tropical storm until November the 28th. The extratropical storm then passed close to the Canary Islands and made landfall in Morocco. The Canary Islands were battered by the remnants of Delta, with winds near hurricane intensity as it passed just to the north. In total, Tropical Storm Delta caused 19 fatalities and damages of $364 million, all on the Canary Islands. Now to the eastern Pacific region, in particular the western coast of Mexico, excluding the Baja California Peninsula and the other parts of Central America. Most storms that make landfall in the eastern Pacific do so here, often at varying intensities, but many storms have caused severe damage and human cost in the past. In this region there have been 107 landfalls, 50 of them as tropical storms, 35 Category 1 hurricanes, 13 Category 2 storms, 5 Category 3 major hurricanes, 5 intense Category 4 storms and a single catastrophic Category 5 hurricane landfall. The costliest cyclone in this region was Hurricane Manuel of this year, causing $4.2 billion in damages. The deadliest storm was the 1959 hurricane, which caused 1,800 fatalities. The last storm to make landfall here was Manuel this year. In the latter half of October 1959, a tropical cyclone was first detected a few hundred miles south of Oaxaca. Already a hurricane, by the time it was first identified, the storm moved towards the west-northwest, soon intensifying into a major hurricane whilst located southwest of Guerrero. The storm turned towards the west as it gained Category 4 intensity, but turned towards the north and continued to strengthen, eventually making landfall as a destructive Category 5 hurricane in the state of Jalisco.
packing winds of at least 160 miles per hour and a central pressure of 958 millibars or lower, the hurricane route chaos and devastation in the region, causing the deaths of at least 1,800 and resulting in damages of upwards of $280 million. In mid-September 1982, a tropical depression formed offshore Central America and slowly moved northwards towards Guatemala, stalling over land for around a day before exiting near the border with Mexico. The depression continued towards the west and was only named Tropical Storm Paul on September the 25th. Paul then moved towards the west-northwest, becoming a hurricane two days later. Paul then advanced northwards, peaking as a Category 2 hurricane as it clipped at the southern tip of Baja California and made a second Mexican landfall in northern Sinaloa, where it dissipated. Paul caused severe flooding as a tropical depression over Central America hitting El Salvador and Guatemala particularly badly, along with southern Mexico. Up to 2,340 fatalities occurred in this region, with a further 24 in northern Mexico from Paul's final landfall. Total damages from the storm amounted to over $1.1 billion. In 1993, a short-lived storm named Beatriz formed near the coast of Mexico and made landfall near the border with Oaxaca and Guerrero as a strong tropical storm. Beatriz caused major flooding in the region, resulting in six fatalities, none of which in a landfall region, along with damages of $1.7 billion. The next month, in July 1993, another tropical cyclone formed in the same area and developed into Hurricane Calvin. This storm tracked further west and clipped the coast of Jalisco as a Category 2 hurricane. Calvin weakened into a tropical storm and made another landfall in Baja California Sur as a tropical depression, dying out completely as it emerged onto the western coast of the peninsula. More heavy rainfall occurred along the southern coast of Mexico in particular with total losses from the storm coming in the form of 37 fatalities and $32 million in monetary damage. In mid-September 1995, Tropical Storm Ishmael formed in the open East Pacific waters. The storm tracked just west of north for most of its life, attaining hurricane status whilst west of Jalisco. Ishmael continued towards the Gulf of California, passing just east of the Baja California Peninsula, before making landfall in northern Sinaloa. Ishmael dissipated inland in northern Mexico. Near the landfall area, the worst of the flooding occurred, resulting in 116 fatalities and damages of $26 million in the region. In the first week of October 1997, a tropical depression formed in the far eastern Pacific Ocean, a few hundred miles south of southern Mexico. Tracking east-southeast at first, the system gradually developed, becoming Tropical Storm Pauline the next day. Pauline then rapidly intensified, peaking as a Category 4 hurricane on October the 7th. Pauline then weakened slightly but remained a major hurricane as it approached the coast of Mexico. The storm re-intensified to reach Category 4 intensity once more and then paralleled the coast of Oaxaca where it eventually made landfall as a strong Category 2 storm in the western part of the state. Pauline continued to parallel the coast, weakening all the while and finally dissipated when it moved further inland. The storm caused considerable environmental damage along with flooding, landslides, strong winds and beach erosion that resulted in the deaths of up to 500 and damages totaling nearly $450 million. In October 2002, a tropical disturbance developed into Tropical Storm Kenna whilst located out to sea. Kenna moved towards the west-northwest for a time and intensified when it began to curve polewards. Kenna intensified without intermission and peaked as an intense Category 5 hurricane with sustained winds of 165 miles per hour and a central air pressure of 913 millibars. Kenna proceeded towards the northeast, making landfall as a Category 4 major hurricane in Nayarit, where it quickly weakened and dissipated inland. Strong winds coupled with a storm surge of up to 16 feet caused devastation in the port town of San Blas. Total damages amounted to over $100 million, with four fatalities confirmed. In mid-September 2006, a tropical depression formed off the coast of Mexico and developed into Tropical Storm Lane near Michoacan. Lane continued to parallel the coast as a tropical storm, intensifying into a hurricane as it rounded Jalisco. 
Lane then continued to intensify into a Category 3 major hurricane before making its only landfall in central Sinaloa. Lane caused notable effects all along the areas of coastline that it hooked for most of its duration, though the worst damage occurred near the landfall area. In total, there were four reported dead and damages of $203 million. At the end of May 2010, a short-lived tropical storm, Agatha, formed in the far eastern Pacific and moved towards the northeast. A weak storm, Agatha, made landfall near the Mexico-Guatemala border and soon dissipated. The storm caused heavy flooding in this part of Central America, resulting in a total of up to 237 fatalities, most in Guatemala, and over a billion dollars in damages. In October 2011, a tropical cyclone formed far out to sea and became Tropical Storm Jova as it moved towards the northwest. Jova continued in this fashion for around two days before stalling and gaining hurricane status as it began to move eastwards. Jova continued to intensify a day later and was soon a major Category 3 hurricane as it began to curve towards the north and approach the coast of Mexico. Jova made landfall as a Category 2 storm in Jalisco and soon dissipated inland. Due to flooding and strong winds predominantly, Jova caused 9 fatalities and nearly $204 million in damages. In September this year, a tropical depression formed to the south of Guerrero and became Tropical Storm Manuel, stalling for a time before moving northwards towards Mexico. Manuel then began to turn towards the northwest, making landfall in Jalisco just shy of hurricane status. The storm weakened quickly over land and dissipated shortly afterwards. However, the remnants lived on and continued northwest, regenerating two days later as it approached the Gulf of California. Manuel, moving slowly, then attained hurricane status whilst bearing down on Sinaloa, making landfall at peak intensity as a minimal hurricane. Flooding was the main culprit throughout the affected areas, with the full extent of the storm being realised with a total of 169 fatalities and damages of $4.2 billion. Located along the western coast of Mexico, we have the Baja California Peninsula, a long and comparatively narrow stretch of land joining the rest of the continent in the north. In between is the Gulf of California. Many hurricanes make landfall here, particularly in the south, though most of the peninsula is not heavily populated. Since 1950 there have been 52 landfalls here, 24 of them were tropical storms, 21 category 1 hurricanes, 5 category 2 storms and 2 category 3 major hurricanes. The costliest cyclone was Hurricane Juliet in 2001, with damages of $400 million. The deadliest storm was Hurricane Liza in 1976, with 1,263 fatalities. The last storm to make landfall here was Tropical Storm Octave this year. In October 1967, a tropical depression formed in the open eastern Pacific and moved slowly towards the west or west-northwest, only becoming tropical storm Olivia after three days. Olivia executed a slow turn towards the north and then turned north-northeast. The storm then made landfall in Baja California Sur, moving into the Gulf of California when it began to rapidly intensify. Olivia then turned towards the west, making landfall on the eastern side of the peninsula as a major Category 3 hurricane, before quickly dissipating over land. Olivia caused 61 fatalities in a sparsely populated region with unknown damages. In late September 1976, a tropical depression formed out to sea and initially moved westwards and then curved towards the north, becoming Tropical Storm Liza the next day. The storm continued just east of north fairly slowly and developed into a hurricane. Within 48 hours, Liza had intensified into a Category 4 storm and the hurricane peaked with sustained winds of 140 mph and was only slightly weaker when the storm made landfall in northern Sinaloa. 
Liza didn't make landfall on the Baja California Peninsula, but passed very close as a strong Category 4 storm, causing a fierce storm surge and heavy rains, coupled with powerful winds. Flooding caused the main human cost of the storm, with a total of 1,263 fatalities and damages of just over $100 million. In September 2001, a tropical depression formed near the southern coast of Guatemala and quickly developed into a tropical storm Juliet. Juliet generally moved towards the west-northwest and after two days developed into a hurricane. Juliet rapidly intensified, peaking as a Category 4 storm very briefly as it stalled, before weakening and re-strengthening in quick succession. Juliet continued towards the northwest, gradually weakening until nearing the Baja California Peninsula, eventually making landfall as a tropical storm after dawdling offshore. Juliet moved into the Gulf of California as a tropical depression and finally dissipated near Baja California North. Juliet caused heavy rainfall over the southern half of the peninsula, with over 30 inches reported in some areas. In total, the storm caused 12 fatalities and $400 million in damages. In the middle of September 2003, a tropical depression formed to the south of Jalisco and developed into tropical storm Marty a half day later. Marty continued towards the northwest, becoming a hurricane and striking the southern tip of Baja California as a Category 2 storm. Marty continued into the Gulf of California, holding on to tropical storm strength as it entered the northernmost extent of the Gulf before weakening into a depression. Marty's track and effects were fairly similar to Juliet's, with 12 fatalities occurring and damages of $100 million. In early October 2008, a tropical depression formed to the south of Oaxaca out to sea and moved towards the west. The next day, Tropical Storm Norbert was named, and the storm continued towards the west, becoming a hurricane almost three days later. Norbert peaked out to sea as a powerful Category 4 storm, but weakened as it curved towards the north. However, Norbert regained much of its earlier strength and reached a secondary peak as a Category 3 major hurricane, making landfall in Baja California Sur as a Category 2 storm, and then to Southern Senora as a minimal hurricane. Most of the damages from the storm occurred in Baja California Sur, where a significant storm surge was also noted. In total, 28 died and damages totaled nearly $100 million. In late August 2009, a tropical depression formed to the south of Mexico over open waters and developed quickly into Tropical Storm Jemina. After spending some time as a tropical storm, Jemina quickly intensified to become a Category 4 storm, an intensity it managed to maintain for considerable time until its approach to the coast of Baja California. Jemina made three landfalls on the peninsula, the first two as a hurricane on the western coast. Jemina then stalled in the Gulf of California and weakened into a depression making its final landfall on the eastern coast as it became a remnant low. Significant damage occurred in the landfall area with total damages amounting to $211 million and seven fatalities occurring.
out in the central Pacific Ocean lies the rather isolated Hawaiian island group, which consists of eight main islands and several other smaller islands towards the northwest, mostly volcanic in nature. The region doesn't often receive hurricanes, usually remnants of storms, though notable hurricanes have passed close or indeed made landfall in the past. In total, Hawaii has received three cyclone landfalls since 1950, one tropical storm, one Category 1 hurricane, and a single intense Category 4 storm. Hurricane Iniki is not only the costliest storm to strike Hawaii, but also the deadliest and most recent to make landfall. The storm caused $1.8 billion in damages and six fatalities when it struck in 1992. In mid-August of 1950, a tropical depression formed in the central Pacific and after moving slowly northwest for over a day, developed into tropical storm Hiki, continuing its heading over the next few days. Hiki passed by the Hawaiian Islands towards the northeast, attaining hurricane intensity north of Molokai. The storm then turned towards the west the next day and then towards the southwest for a while before resuming a due west heading. Hiki lost hurricane intensity as it began to move back towards the northwest and dissipated a couple of days later. Hiki brought record-breaking amounts of rainfall to the island of Kauai, where 52 inches of rain or more was reported at Kanalahuluhulu. The storm caused a single fatality, as well as significant but uncertain amount of damages. Near the end of November 1957, a tropical storm was detected in the central Pacific, a few hundred miles south-southwest of the Hawaiian Islands. The storm moved towards the north and northeast, becoming a hurricane after a day and maintaining Category 1 intensity as it passed close to Kauai as it began to turn towards the west, veering away from a potential landfall. Nina continued towards the west and after a few days weakened to a tropical storm, dipping southwards before dissipating. Nina caused four fatalities, three of them offshore, and damages amounting to $100,000. At the beginning of August 1959, a tropical storm was detected entering the central Pacific and was soon an intense hurricane, peaking as a Category 4 storm with sustained winds of 150 miles per hour, holding on to Category 4 intensity until making its closest approach with the Big Island, and maintained major hurricane status until it neared Oahu. DOT continued towards the northwest and made landfall on Kauai as a Category 1 storm, quickly weakening thereafter. DOT failed to cause any fatalities, though significant damages occurred on land, amounting to a total of $6 million. In the second half of November 1982, a tropical storm formed at a low latitude in the central Pacific and was named Iwa. Iwa continued towards the northeast and northwards, attaining hurricane intensity as it began to pose a threat to the Hawaiian Islands. The storm curved towards the northeast, passing just north of Niihau and Kauai, turning extratropical a day later. Iwa caused significant damage on the three westernmost islands of Niihau, Kauai and Oahu, rendering hundreds, perhaps thousands of homes uninhabitable. In total, four fatalities occurred from the storm and damages amounted to over $300 million. In September 1992, a tropical depression formed in the eastern Pacific and progressed towards the central region, becoming tropical storm Iniki two days after forming. The cyclone continued just north of west, attaining hurricane status as it continued over open waters, gradually intensifying towards its peak as a severe Category 4 hurricane as it turned towards the north, taking aim at the westernmost islands of Niihau and Kauai. Iniki made landfall on the latter with sustained winds of 145 miles per hour, gusting as high as 175 miles per hour. The storm caused heavy damage in this region, with a storm surge at several feet high, though most of the damage occurred from Iniki's intense and hazardous winds, which destroyed nearly 1,500 residences and damaged many thousands more. Notable effects were also noted on Oahu, though this island fared a great deal better than Kauai, which bore the brunt of the storm's damage total, which amounted to $1.8 billion. Six deaths are also associated with the storm. <laughs>